Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to take a look at some algorithms that are freely available on the internet to look at the physiochemical properties for your proteins of interest. The first step is to get the protein sequence that you're interested in. So NCBI, or the National Center for Biotechnology Information, has a lot of really helpful databases for that. If you'll notice, I can do the drop down to do protein. I can put in a protein name, an open reading frame, gene symbol, etc. I have an affinity for bacteria, so we're just going to use this protein that I know of from Methanococcus. You're going to go ahead and download the FASTA sequence. Uh, more importantly, you really want to copy it to your clipboard, so go ahead and highlight that. And the three programs that are really helpful for looking at uh, physiochemical properties are PSORT-B, SUI, and XPASI. And they all kind of give you similar information that you can then use to determine the solubility and potential cellular location of the protein of interest. So let's take a look at this. We'll start with PSORT-B. So you can do a general search of Google for PSORT-B and you'll come up with this website. So the idea is that I'm going to put in what type of organism it is, it actually is an archaea, um, what kind of output I want, do I want this sent to email or via the web, and notice if it's email, you have to give it your email address. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the FASTA sequence in. I can choose to upload a file if I want to, not a problem. Go ahead and click Submit. Okay, oh shoot, I forgot the header. This sometimes happens. So I need to go ahead and give it the carrot with all the good little garble on the top. So let's try this again, shall we? There you go, you know you like me. Okay, so here's the result from PSORT B. As you notice, it was a very fast uh, computation. And so what we see here are localization scores. So you can have a localization score from 2.5, which means that the algorithm was unable to determine whether it was a cytoplasmic, a membrane, a cell wall, or an extracellular protein. Um, or you can have a maximum score of 10, where the algorithm is very confident about its location. As you notice here, my final prediction is that my protein of interest is in the cytoplasm with around a localization score of very close to 10. Uh, and based on some other work in the lab that I've done with this protein, I agree with these results. So then let's take a look, for example, at SUI. So once we go over to SUI, we can then take a look at its algorithm. If I want to um, go ahead and put the title in, I can do that. Uh, I put my protein sequence in here. And if memory serves me for this one, I do not want the little carrot header that comes with FASTA. Go ahead and plug that in there. Okay, and what we'll notice here is that we get the total length of the protein and the average hydrophobicity. So if the hydrophobicity um, is negative, it's labeled as a soluble protein. But for example, we can see transmembrane regions. So just to give you an example of how this would work, I'm going to run SUI again using a different protein. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to just type in transmembrane. I really don't care what protein it gives me. I just want something that fits into the cell membrane. Yeah, this one looks like it might work from lactobacillus. I'm cutting and pasting that into SUI. Now, if you notice, I still get my average hydrophobicity, but now instead of being a negative number, it's a positive number, indicating that it doesn't uh, like water and that it, in fact, would live within the cell membrane. And in this particular case, SUI is very helpful in showing you these are the regions of your protein from N-terminal 11 to C-terminal 33, for example, and these are the amino acids that would go in between these terminal termini, excuse me. Um, and then it tells you whether or not this is going to be a primary transmembrane helicase or a secondary. So you get the idea that this particular random protein that we picked has five potential transmembrane helices. So you get the idea that on how uh, SUI works, whether or not you have solubility. So go back to my example here, my good old MJ663. Take a look at XPASI. 
So ex passe, I like protopram because this is going to give you a lot of the similar information that we've seen with PSORT B and SUI. But keep in mind that ex passe can also do other uh, calculations in other tools besides protopram. So if you've heard of ex passe in other areas, so it's probably what's going on there. Same idea, I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste my sequence into the box. I can put a title if I want, etc. All right, and then as it computes, it'll go ahead and show you the sequence that you gave it along with where your amino acids align based on number. The more interesting data is scrolled out. So you have your number of amino acids. This should actually match what you come up with from SUI. It'll give you molecular weight. The theoretical PI, this is the pH that the protein would be most stable at. Some proteins prefer neutral pH, other proteins prefer more of an acid or a base pH. In this case, we're looking at around a theoretical pH of around 6. I can then look at the amino acid composition breakdown. This could be very handy, for example, if I'm doing something like uh, protein, or I should say amino acid frequency counts, etc. Um, it'll tell me the number of negatively and positively charged residues, what my atomic composition is, um, and then how many atoms are in this particular protein. We can also have extinction coefficients. And so there's two types of extinction coefficients that you can have. One that assumes that all of my cysteine residues form cysteine um, bonds, and also one that looks at cysteine residues as being reduced or unbonded, for example. Uh, cysteine is an amino acid that forms bonds with other amino acids, main, mainly between cysteines, and it, it gives um, stability to the protein. I can then take a look at whether or not um, my estimated half-life looks decent. Instability index is fun, because you'll notice the number here is 30, which then classifies my protein as stable. 40 is the instability index cut off. What this means is that at a normal physiological pH of around 7.4-ish, 7, 7 the protein should be stable. If my instability index is 40 or above, then at a physiological pH, my protein would not be considered stable. So this is not horribly helpful unless you're trying to mimic conditions in the laboratory for, say, uh, x-ray crystallography or some sort of structure analysis, in which case having this information is extremely handy to tweak um, your protein before your image. I can also take a look at my uh, um, athletic index here. Uh, so that will go ahead and tell me how many branch chain amino acids I have which again could go into solubility calculations. And of course, the grand average of hydrophobicity uh, here, I probably mispronounced that, but that's okay, a gravy as everyone calls it. Um, this is going to be the same number that you see when you look at SUI's average hydrophobicity number. So keep that in mind. We have two parameters within x -Passi, the gravy, and the number of amino acids, which should match what we get from SUI. However, if SUI is looking at a uh, membrane-bound protein, then it will give us this transmembrane helices information, which x -Passi does not. So to save time, frequently I'll run proteins that I'm unfamiliar with through x -Passi. And then if I start getting um, positive values for gravy, I'll purposely run it through SUI in order to get those transmembrane regions. Well, hopefully this has been very helpful, um, particularly if you're working on the hypothetical protein project in my class. Um, so I look forward to your comments and have a great day.